granted davis field literal graveyard like actual dead bodies buried under where we were playing soccer i will never forget smalls this is i i want to say it was my junior year so you still would have been there if not it was my senior year but i know i will never forget this i just remember it was a night game at davis field okay and there was like a hole in the ground okay there was an actual hole all right but it was like there's the circle in the middle of the field and it was like lower right, probably like five yards back, 10 yards deep. Okay. And so relatively still like the middle of the field. And it yeah, was probably yeah, yeah. a hole, like, like a two by two, three by three hole. Okay. No idea why it was there or where it came from or wherever I go back and tell Sean and Brad about it. And they're like, okay, go tell the groundskeeper, the maintenance guy or whatever. So I go and I granted, remember this is in a soccer game. And there's a hole in the middle of the field. And I tell him, hey, sir, there's a hole in the middle of the ground. I can take you to it, whatever. But we need that, you know, fixed because we have a game in like 40 minutes. Yeah. And he was like, he was like, okay, I'll see what I can do. Guy leaves, comes back, has a giant orange traffic cone. Yes. And comes out, just goes and drops. <laughs> it in the middle of the field over this hole what's up guys it's your boy Smalls. Back with Oz from the Bench, back on the vault, the weekly show that takes a look at some of the best and worst jerseys in sports. I'm sucking down on a little cigar, a little stogie tonight. And as always, he unfortunately, you know, is he does not have a stogie, and I don't blame him for it. It is my guy, Benny Buckets. It's not your fault. I just, here. I, I'm glad to I'm glad to have you here. That's all that matters. <laughs> I appreciate the uh, the joy of my company, but I, I am a little jealous. Unfortunately, I am not sharing a stogie with you, but I hope to, you know, relatively soon once you get your butt back to the berg here. Yeah, no, yeah, it, it won't be that long. We were talking before before the show. It, it'll it'll be here before you know it. You know, it'll be here before. Okay, you know yeah, it. but you know, I mean, you know me for. Over ten years now, mm-hmm. or at least are around that number. You know, I'm the most impatient person. I know. There, there is no way that like I'm just like, oh yeah, that's fine. Get here tomorrow. tomorrow. I, I can't. Yeah, I can't. I can't wait. But it's a good thing. Yeah, all good things stemming from this, and I'm looking very forward to seeing you. So yeah. know that that it's not a pressure on you. It's just out of excitement for the vault to be reunited. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So it's uh. Uh, we talked about it last week. Your boy's coming back to the Berg. And yes, I'm not, sir. We're not, we're not gonna go as into it, you know, as what we did last week. But it's uh, we were talking before the show. I'm at that point at work where I literally have nothing else to do. Tomorrow is technically Thursday. If you're watching this on Friday, Thursday is technically my last day. But I have nothing to do, and I'm considering just like going in for like an hour just to say that I was there because there's nothing yep. for me to do. See ya. Yeah. So yeah. Um, Hit him with a couple dad finger guns and um, just, you know, yeah. peace out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, it, weirdly enough, so uh, the guy that they have coming in to replace me, uh, he's been on site this week with us. Uh, he was the long snapper at the University of Houston, believe it or not. Okay. Yeah. Like recent? Like within Rel- the last- Yeah, he's like, he's like my age, yeah. Nice. Yeah, he said he played Good with Derek King. Yeah. That's wild. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's so, awesome, though. Yeah. Good for that guy. Shout out that guy. Shout out that guy. Yeah. Um. But yeah. <laughs> uh. Celebrate celebratory cigar right here. Uh. Cause your boy's done and you got a few weeks off. Uh. I'm juiced tonight because I know that tomorrow's my last day at work. Going going up to Vermont, having a little boys' weekend up in the up on the slopes. Uh, oh yeah that's right hitting those slopes uh 
I got a little uh got a little uh slope side Airbnb action. Uh oh right. Yeah, again, hell yeah, going out in style. Absolutely. It, it, gonna get unapologetically maimed via Good. alcohol this Good. weekend. So Good. Yeah. A lot of stogies, a lot of uh a lot of uh what's it called? Lift chair beers as you're just going up on the lift. Dude, it's it's gonna be great. It's gonna be great. Three days. I'm I'm fucking yeah. stoked. Whoops, not a lot to Hell start. Yeah. Sorry. But uh Ben, it's good to be back. We have a very special episode tonight. Uh very I'm very pumped. Yeah. This is a unique one. And very one that unique. honestly I'm I'm surprised we didn't do last season. Yeah. Um that I'm I'm stoked and especially with who we are, we'll be able to do this again oh, with yeah. other things. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um so before we get started, um so two things. What are you drinking tonight? So don't let this bottle fool you. Okay. It looks like your standard ordinary lemon lime Gatorade bottle, which it is, but there is some good old Uncle Tito's in there um, to, to help liven up the night. Uh, uh, and much your, respect. And yourself? Um, I'm drinking some Slain whiskey. I got to switch it up sometimes from the JMO. So it's a little Slain Irish whiskey, which, you know, at this point, it just goes down like water. So, you know, I don't know. Hey. Atta boy, you're hey, you're consistent. That's what we do here is consistency. Consistency. That's right. Um, the other thing I was gonna say, and I want to re, uh, I want to resurrect this. It might be easier when I'm back in Pittsburgh, because that way, at least we'll be together sometimes, and we won't be nearly as forgetful. You owe some brunettes on the show. Ah oh, shit. Ah yeah. uh, crap. Yep. I. Uh, <laughs> oh man, I do. Okay. I did forget, and that is a at least half a season old that I owe that. So yeah. I will I will at some point. Gotta be honest though, it is harder to find than it used to be. So it I think that's because like a lot of people came to their senses and was like, okay, like literally nobody should drink this. We would give this to prisoners. <laughs> like, um, so maybe that's what it is, but I I pr- promise. At some point soon, I will get some, and I will make sure that you see the bottle, the whole authenticity of the thing, so that you know I'm a man of my work. Yeah. And a little background. I think it was, you know, the premise of the show, right, is now we don't always drink, but the premise of the show is to come yeah. and have a drink with a buddy and, you know, talk shit, talk shop, whatever whatever the fuck you want to call it. I, I'm swearing a lot today. I got to cut that out. Um, you You are on one. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, but Ben last year, he he was on a long streak where he did not. I don't know if it, you know, he just didn't have time after work to go and grab something. It, whatever the circumstances were, there were a string of about five weeks where he left me hanging and made me feel like a little little itsy bitsy alcoholic over here. Um, and but Whoa. but Whoa. <laughs> uh, but. We came up with an agreement where we would get I would get back at him by choosing his drink. And it yeah. meant it was meant to we both forgot like for literally half a season, I think. Like we both just kept forgetting. Like I kept re- forgetting to remind you, you kept forgetting to get it. I think you tried at one point. Also, I really did. I went the yeah. one time and they didn't have it and like the next best thing was Vlad, but I was like they, you know, Small specifically said I got to get Burnett. So, yeah, yeah. But like I said, it has been surprisingly hard to come by. And that's not an excuse because I will drink it. Mm-hmm. But it is uh, – it's to a point where, like, you know, that was the – or I don't want to say the, but one of the – when you were an underage kid and you have somebody's older brother or sister getting you alcohol, like, that's what they get you. They tell you it's, like, $40 and it's actually, like, 7 and so you give them all this money for the worst sewage level alcohol. And uh, and that, that's what it was. But hey, put hair on our chest was right. was steel mill backbone of Pittsburgh like liquor that got us prepared for manhood as we are today. That's right. Yeah, I still have a little bit of PTSD from pink lemonade brunettes. 
that oh, stuff was vile. But probably the most tolerable because they were all. I don't know, man. I don't know. I think I'm. A, I almost <laughs> would prefer the just the plane over. The, it was bad, dude. It was real bad. Um. Anyway, that's that. That'll be coming up too. I wanted to resurrect that. So I as, you should, that. as you should, as you should. I I earned it. Yep, I earned it. Um. And again, you don't. We don't have to drink on every show. Like we can definitely. But there was a string. Oh, it was like eight weeks in a row. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was a long yeah, time. like, like enough to where like once we got to the word months plural, mm-hmm. it was like okay, like I gotta, I gotta give something. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Um. All right, Ben. Before we hop into it, do you want to give us an ad read from our oh. great sponsor? You bet your sweet ass I do. Listen up, ladies and gents. We, as always, are repping the one and only Marshall Fitness. You are a one-stop shop for all of your fitness needs. Will Marshall, who we definitely plan on having the show again, was was on uh, twice last year. He was our original sponsor and still our only sponsor, and we've created such a beautiful partnership. And the reason that we here at the vault are doing that is because Will Marshall is somebody that you can rely on. He is a certified personal trainer. He will be able to work around your needs and your schedule. He's not going to mold you into what he thinks you should look like. You bring to him your goal and Will Marshall is going to get you there. He will work based off of your equipment, your time, your schedule, and also using the MyFitnessPal app. So it's so easy for you to track your own progress. He's just going to be your guide along the way. He's not going to be a dictator standing over you telling you exactly how you need to do things. It's just for those people who want to get back in shape, go to somebody that you can rely on, somebody that you can trust, somebody that knows what they're talking about and lives it. Talks the talk and walks the walk every single day, and that's Marshall Fitness. Please look him up on Facebook at Marshall Fitness and his Instagram uh, at Will Marshall underscore one. And if you would like some sick gear with that logo that you see there on it, you want to go to, is it? Yeah, so just go to his go to his uh, Facebook page, Marshall Fitness Facebook page. And, the and link is on link. there. Yeah. There will be a link um, for you to go and get some merch also. And especially if you're a part of that program, you're going to be so proud of the progress that you're making that you're going to want to wrap it and make sure that other people are able to do it as easily and as quickly as you will with using Marshall Fitness. Um, so talk to Will Marshall today. Yeah. Uh, we'll get into the topic in a sec. I did. It, will knows what he's doing. I saw him put something up on a story today. One of his clients uh, came in before he started training with Will. He, he weighed about a buck seventy-seven, not like a ton of fat or anything either. He just, uh, he, he but he came in at a buck seventy-seven. He's now up to two hundred three, uh, and that's just a one hundred percent muscle. That's, that's that's awesome, crazy. That's like twenty-five pounds that he just put. Like Will knows what he's doing, but um, we'll get into this topic, Benny. Today we are doing the in my closet jersey episode. So basically the premise of this is, you know, you guys know me and Ben, we we always say that we're like jersey heads, right? We kind of want to show that we are, that we actually are. We live and breathe jerseys and just like sports culture or whatever you want to call it in general. Like we're we're meatheads about this stuff. Um we're obsessed with it. Oh, through and through. Yeah. And Ooh, th- threadheads. Threadheads. Boom. Threadheads. That's that's tight, dude. That's tight. Hey, we're coming up with a lot of sh- stuff this yeah. season. Already. Quarter zip drip, baby. The quarter zip drip. You know, and hey, I'm sure at some point we're gonna bring up cream is clean. Cream is clean. So yeah, that's gonna come up at some point. But yeah, dude, us threadheads over here. I'm so stoked for this. And like, I mean, you and I had talked before, also. Like, we're gonna be able to do this again. You know, like we have enough to where we can do a in my closet part two and things like that and show people different jerseys that we have. And uh, I am I am stoked, dude. This is one that I like because we, we get to be a little braggadocious. Um, but I think it's also cool for people who have actually like been involved in the show that are going to be able to see like, hey, these guys talk about jerseys every week. But what heat are they packing in their closets? You know, mm-hmm. so um, I, I think that this is awesome, especially for anybody to see what we have but especially those people who've really followed along with the show yeah absolutely uh i did 
I wanted to put one on here. I do not have it yet. Um, one of my coworkers, knowing that I'm the big Penn State football fan that I am, and knowing that he is a huge Dallas Cowboys fan, as a going away, like me and me and this guy are tight. As a going away gift, he was gonna get me a signed Michael Parsons jersey. Holy hell! Yeah, I did. I have not received it yet. Um, I think it's still it's still in the process of getting you know sent or like you know picked up or whatever. But that's that's the plan. I don't know if it'll be the Cowboys or Penn State. I'm not sure. I, I but I told the guy I was like I don't care. Just yeah, I, that's. That's awesome, especially like defensive rookie of the year, right there. And I, I wanted, to, I oh, wanted to get it, but like I, unfortunately, I don't have it. I would have, that would have been like my first pick. Cause I, I mean, that's like that's not touchable, like yeah. But having said that, Ben, let's get into your first pick. All right, my first pick here uh, is actually my my latest cop. Um, is this 2004 Atlanta Falcons Mike Vick jersey. I know that Mike Vick has a lot of controversy on whether you like him or not, but let me take you back to 2004. There was nobody doing what Michael Vick was doing on the football field. He was the, like, transcending change-the-game dual-threat quarterback. This guy uh, has the... Highest speed rating on Madden for a quarterback of, of all time that Lamar just broke recently. But before that, stood for 17 years. And uh, the guy had his own commercial for Madden, which was the Michael Vick experience. You don't, And if you remember that commercial, that is a top-tier commercial. It's it one is. of the best commercials of all time. And then you got to think, no, no other player was really getting things like that. It was just a picture of them on the cover. Michael Vick was incredible. He went to Atlanta that uh, since Deion Sanders had been a very lackluster team. He came in, he revitalized everything there. He became Atlanta. Like that dude was Atlanta. And Atlanta citizens were proud to have him there because you had the cool guy, Mike Vick. He was a stud at Virginia Tech. He comes flying out of college, hits a league by storm, and he's picking up almost as many rushing yards as he did passing yards against every defense. He was decimating people. He was defying gravity. He was, I mean, transcending the game, life-changing. And until he had his uh, run-ins with the law, we'll just put it that way for the most polite point, even aside from that, his comeback story and the way that he changed his life, like this guy was somebody that, all kids, when you stepped on any patch of grass to play pickup football, whether that be in recess or on the weekends with your friends, everybody wanted to be Mike Vick. Everybody wanted to be Mike Vick. It was like you had to be Mike Vick. So if you had any of his jerseys, you were dope as hell. And especially the out of all three types of uniform, or well, there was like four or five that he wore at Atlanta, this one was personally my favorite because it was like slightly new school, but still the majority of the black with the accents are red and white um, to go in there. But th that all black uniform and him with the visor and everything. Oh, man, he was ice cold. So uh, so I have that one as well. Um, that's what I had to lead off with. And uh, and here it is. Uh, in oh, wait, I'm moving away from the camera, but here's go. the Michael Vick jersey. OK. And then on the back here, and then I got, you know, the sleeves with the logo. This is the Reebok John back in the day. Um, but, yeah, man, and, and this is one, like, for turkey bowls, I'm bringing it out. Mm -hmm. You know, if uh, if if I'm really any pickup football, this is one you got to beat. Now, I'm much more fat and Caucasian than Michael Vick ever has or ever will be, but it still makes me feel like Mike. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Vick? made it look like he was always playing with a Nerf football on a playground because he was fun. At all time. Yeah, it, it, like the way he could put that ball on a rope and do whatever he wanted with it. Like, Oh, my God. It literally looked yeah. like he was playing with a Nerf football. Like, it was it was crazy. Yeah. Like, it, it, it was – he was just screwing around out there sometimes. Like, he was just – he was – Yeah, just, it, it looked like it was, it was a game within a game. Like, he yeah. was just messing with defenses. Yeah, it, it's insane. I, I do agree. The all black look, I I think is. I do not like the new Falcons 
jerseys. I actually, I mean, like, like them. what they, like what they wear now. Yeah. It, yeah. 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 I agree. Yeah. It, they, they tried to make it more old school while keeping it kind of, it, it just, it doesn't work for me. I, yeah, the especially the helmets. Retro look. And, and maybe, maybe like it's different because this look right here is like what we grew up with maybe. seeing the Falcons, but like, I don't know, man. I just I think that this is so much better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, and like it, he was a legend. Like Mike Mike Vick on Madden was a cheat code. You literally could not lose. It wasn't fair. It was like on two K in twenty seventeen or twenty sixteen. Like, hey, you can be anybody except the Warriors. You know what I mean? Like it was like it was that type of thing. Like you can even be the Falcons if you want, but you got to sit Vick. Like mm -hmm. it's just not fair. They, yeah. You know what I mean? Like. Yeah. He was that guy who was like, man, like truly before he ran into his legal problems, it was like everybody wanted to be Michael Vick because you let's let's flash back to 2004. The top QBs were mainly pocket passers like Tom Brady, Peyton Manning, Kurt Warner. Even Donovan um, McNabb was a pocket passer. A, a pocket passer. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's like like Michael Vick was the truest dual threat quarterback in the league for quite some time there were a few guys that tried he was like the only one that was successful for a very long time it being a dual threat quarterback and man i mean it just true i mean i know we say the word electric a lot on this show he was literally a lightning bolt striking the field it was some of the most entertaining football i've ever watched nobody gave a shit about the falcons but then mike vick goes there and they are must see tv bro mm -hmm. yeah and it was also as a Steeler fan it was really cool to see him at least have a little bit of that spark still when he was a backup on the Steelers. Because there were a few games yeah. where, like, he won the game. When Ben was out, you know, that one year uh, for an extended period of time, Vic came in, and he did his job, and it was electric to watch. Now, it wasn't the Mike Vic of old, obviously. Yeah. But, but having said that, there it was so cool to watch him in a Steelers uniform just with that little bit of spark still left. Because, I mean, it just brought you back to the days of, you just watching highlights of this dude do he just did whatever he wanted. He did literally whatever yeah. he wanted. Yeah, and I mean and, and we could even throw it back like I remember everybody saying A that he shouldn't have gotten a shot, which I understand some of those people, right? But then when he came back and he played for the Eagles and he literally balled out. He also I mean, changed he his game like, too. He changed how he played. He was being more of a gunslinger at that point and ripping the rock. I mean it, like it, it'll live in infamy forever. That bomb that he threw to Deshaun Jackson for like, I don't know, 300 yards at one time. Like, I mean, it was one of the best throws I've ever seen. It just, it was like, Oh my God, Michael Vick is back. You know what I mean? Yeah. And like, and he's doing stuff that we don't even remember. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, Oh yeah. The guy, I mean, you can say whatever you want about Mike Vick, the person, but Mike Vick, the player was somebody that you had to see. Yeah, yeah, and I I feel like now I've definitely heard stories of him. Yeah. Now he's definitely he's kind of changed his life around, and like obviously you know he went to prison for the dog fighting, and I think part of it was probably part you know his upbringing. He thought it was normal. He probably just didn't at the time didn't know that it was as serious as it was. That's what it sounds yeah, like. And not anyway. not that we're making an excuse mm -hmm. for Mike Vick or what he did. But it's just trying to, to know like he's he's at least tried to better his life since. So yeah, yeah and he's um, a big like he's a big uh like uh dog shelter do guy now. Like he that, that's one of his main causes. Like one of his main charities is like humane society or something. Like he works a lot with that. He I think he turned a corner. So it I think if anything, it's a cool story of just redemption, period. Yeah. You know? Like Yeah. And I, I get the I get the critics. I understand that's not a good thing. Yeah, not not saying no. that they're wrong, but uh, it's one of those things that uh, you know. And I was actually just having this conversation recently um, because some people have their own opinions, even about like say Big Ben, like mm -hmm. Ben Roethlisberger, right? To me, you can love the player and still dislike the person. Yeah. You know what I mean? I feel like those are two separate entities. And so however you feel about Michael Vick, that's fine. But you can't tell me that he was a boring football player. I'll mm -hmm. tell you that much right now. Yeah. So 
Yeah. Uh, but yeah, man, I, uh, like I said, this is my latest pickup that I was very lucky to find and uh, I had to throw it on the show. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, great pick. It, it's, it, this was when we were growing up. So this is like a bucket list Jersey. I feel like, Oh, you know? a huge, yeah. Huge nostalgia throwback for mm-hmm. us. Now I know we did the nostalgia episode last week, but listen, I, it's always going to get thrown in there. Yeah. So, absolutely. uh, this week I had to bring it small. What's your first pick out of your closet? All right, so flashing it back to, to 94. So, you know, if you grew up when me and Ben did, like, this was the Space Jam era, right? We we are the Space Jam babies. And, you know, that, I mean, I didn't really know what was going on at the time. I think even as a kid, I was like, why is this dude playing baseball right now? You know, like, first time I saw that movie, I was like, what's going on? And then... Uh, but that's the first thing I think of when I think Michael Jordan, Birmingham Barons, right? So this dude, obviously, it, first of all, if you haven't seen The Last Dance, please go watch it. I think it's on Netflix, uh, about the, I guess, 97, 98 Bulls. They go into how his father was murdered and like either a few weeks or a few days or maybe just a few months afterwards, he shocked the entire world by retiring from the game of basketball, right? And he still to this day, I think, is the most popular athlete of all time. I know you got LeBron and you got some of these other guys that are definitely up there for sure. But there was no other there. I don't think there's been any other world phenomenon like Michael Jordan was. And for him to retire from the game that got him there and that he was just electric playing that was a obviously a giant shock and then to hear in that same press conference that he was going to pursue a career in baseball another uh, like almost a shocking honestly like you're you're stepping off of the pedestal that you're on in the sport that is your bread and butter right and a dramatic change to a completely different sport where he had to change his body 100 percent. he worked out differently he had to get good at baseball again, because I guess, you know, he played when he was younger, but he got good at baseball again just to kind of do it, to kind of get away from the game of basketball, you know, and to probably take his mind off off of, you know, the death death of his father, right? So he went to the AA affiliate of the uh, Chicago White Sox, the, you know, the Birmingham Barons, and I first of all, I love these. Uh, the jerseys themselves, um, definitely plain. You can say what you want about black and white, but there's something crisp about the black and the way that the Barons logo stands out. And then you, th- you throw in, yeah, the, the classic swoosh underneath, you know, that classic baseball swoosh. Um, there's just something about it that really, really, really works. Um, not only that, you know, he's, he eventually, you know, returned to the NBA, obviously, but... He was starting to get kind of good, like, and that's not easy to do from being an athlete that is 100, probably the most focused an athlete has ever been on a sport, period, and to transition to a completely different sport where you have to transform your body and think about things differently. He did it, and he was starting to kind of make strides and and get a lot better. Um, At one point, I forget how many games, he he had a hit streak through like 10 games or something, which... That's super impressive considering he was playing double A ball. So this is my first pick. This is one of those. It, yeah, it's it's definitely like a nostalgia pick, but it's one of those weird jerseys that because an athlete, uh, it's I would almost liken it to like a uh, uh, Bo Jackson Kansas City Royals jersey, but to a greater effect because you you just don't see it that often. So I got the MJ. Birmingham Barons, hopefully you can kind of see it. Birmingham yeah. Barons, 45 jersey. Um, that it, it's just, I've gotten compliments on this tons of times, it, you know, when I wear it out. It's just, it's one of those cool jerseys that it's like, oh yeah, he did do that. And because ever you see the, the Bulls jersey all the time, right? You don't really see the Barons jersey. Um, now, it's not, uh, disclaimer, not authentic. You look at the sleeves on mine, it's got a little, it got the piping at the end of the sleeves. I think they wore that when they were wearing their white jerseys, but I actually think it kind of adds something to it. Um, 
But regardless, it's a legendary jersey, and it's something that when I saw it in the store, uh, and Ben, you and I have talked about the store before down in D.C. Yeah. Um, I saw it in that store, and I was like, I got to have it. Like, I absolutely have to have it. That is like, it's such a cool, unique jersey for tons of reasons, especially for like sports junkies like you and I. Like, this is, you know what I mean? It, it's sports history, you know? Yeah. So that's my second. Or well, my I, I think, second. well, I think in, in a point that you brought up is like, MJ wasn't just basketball, MJ was sports. I mean, mm-hmm. across the world. It was, if you pulled 10 people randomly off the street in any city and you said, name a pro athlete, gotta say nine to 10 out of those 10 are gonna say Michael Jordan. You know what I mean? Like it was like he mm-hmm. just, and even still to this day, there are kids who were born way after his time. We were born just before the end of his time mm-hmm. in the league. And dude is still arguably the most talked about athlete in the world. Yeah. So it's like, I mean, the guy was remarkable. And I think, like you said, the the commonality of seeing the the Bulls jerseys everywhere is it, you know, that just is what it is. It's still respectable, but it's mm-hmm. like, of course, you're going to have the Bulls jersey. Like, I've seen, uh, like, one guy had the Wizards MJ jersey, which yeah. I thought was kind of sick. Um, but this Barons one is awesome because it was such, like, a small period of his life, but it was such a big deal. Like, mm-hmm. in the history of sports, like, this is something th- that are in sports almanacs and stuff. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. this is, like, a wild time because, like you said, the, the gravity in the – of the surprise in his decision to go play baseball and the fact that he only did it for such a short period of time. And it is just a clean Jersey dude. Mm-hmm. Like it's like he could have went and played for some of the others that we highlighted in the <laughs> minor league baseball episode last year, you know, but like it just, it looks good. He looks clean and it's arguably the greatest athlete of all time. So why not get the most obscure jersey you could for the GOAT? You know, yeah. I think that's awesome, and I'm super happy you put it on. Yeah, like I said, it's crisp. I know it's just black and white. It's nothing crazy, but it looks really good. Like, it, yeah. it's just, it's a good, it's a good-looking jersey, period. And it's it's a classic at this point. And again, not as common as a Bulls one, but that's why I like it. I like it because it is, it's different. You know, and that you will see with some of my other picks, right? They they are at least one of my other picks. It's just different, you know. Yeah. All right, Benny, what you got for pick number two? All right, man. You know I had to do it, okay? Especially in light of recent events, travesty where he didn't get into the Hall of Fame because all you baseball writers, and I'm using my swear jar for the day, are a bunch of bitches. And you can't face the fact that this is arguably the greatest baseball player of all time. I don't care that he took HGH. If you pumped me with HGH, I'm around the same height and weight as Barry Bonds, okay? If you pump me with HGH, I'm not hitting over 700 homers. That still takes skill, you bunch of morons. This guy is baseball. And because of you kicking people out or or locking them out of the Hall of Fame and then punishing them for trying to increase their game is why your sport is the most boring one on the planet. I would rather watch golf than baseball anymore. And that's because your sport sucks because you have made people hate the people who made it exciting like Barry Bonds. Barry Bonds, in my mind, even though he only played for Pittsburgh from 86 to 92 and then basically played the rest of his career where he broke all the records in San Fran. I never lost love for Barry Bonds. And you got to figure he stopped playing in Pittsburgh after I was already born. So I grew up seeing Barry Bonds, the giant. Then I learned of Barry Bonds, the pirate. And, you know, I I go back and and I think about like, oh man, that is cool that he kind of got his start here. Uh, still one of the best players of all time in the history of baseball, no matter how many of you guys who haven't seen your feet in 10 years because you haven't done a sit-up or a push-up like me. I know I'm encroaching (laughs) on that territory, but I'm saying all these people, how did they get the right to judge if Barry – because you ask every player, they're like, oh, yeah, dude, no-brainer, Hall of Famer. He should have been in years ago. But he's not, unfortunately – Um, but I think that that gives a chip on Barry's shoulder and almost a chip on mine that I have a Jersey 
of the guy who was too good for baseball and people were just so salty that they couldn't let him in. So uh, this jersey, this jersey is a little darker than what the picture is, but just because the picture is a little lighter. But this is uh, that Pirates jersey. Sorry, I don't have it closed. Um, but this is the Barry Bonds jersey here with uh, with the sick old pirate patch here. And then uh, Barry Bonds on the back, obviously. Um, you know, this is, this is the guy. Um, it is by far – I've had and sold other baseball jerseys. It's by far my favorite baseball jersey I've ever owned, that's for sure. Uh, and part of it is because of who Barry was and the fact that he is the home run king. Um, and he is – even like – and people forget that like dude was a great outfielder too. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, guy was like – an all around good athlete. Like everybody talks about the home runs. He is arguably like you think of guys like him and Babe Ruth and Ken Griffey. And, and, you know, these, these guys that transcended baseball, that were like the Mount Rushmore of baseball players. Like, I, I don't know, man, like he wasn't corking his bat. He's taking HGH that is technically healthier for you. That just literally makes you recover faster and helps you become a healthier human being. But just because it's on a certain list, it's like weed. Like if he was smoking weed back then, they're like, no, we can't let him in. But now it's okay. You know what I mean? Like it's so subjective. But uh, Barry Bonds had a little bit of a rocky exit in Pittsburgh. There was a time where people were throwing batteries at him while he was in the outfield. That's a true story. Um, not proud of that. But I have no love loss for Barry Bonds. I think that he's always been dope. I think he's been a very, like, pretty decent guy in interviews and stuff since then because he knows he's got to preserve his legacy. But I take pride in knowing that Barry Bonds was a pirate. So I had to get his jersey, and it's up there for potentially, like, my favorite that I actively wear. Yeah. Um, a few things. I, I do think I, – I, I saw this recently. The MLB, they had that, what, 20-year agreement or whatever – that like the players association basically outlawed HGH. And that's kind of where that all stemmed from. Right. Um, I firmly believe, and I, I, I will debate anyone on this. You need to bring HGH back. Do it. Especially now it's a lot safer now. Like guys yeah. know what they're doing now. The only, and the only other, uh, now it's it, sure I'm biased. The only other person that I would never let get away with using steroids is Ryan Braun, that prick. Uh, any other <laughs> any other person? No, let him yeah. let him ju- like let him get juiced up. That's when baseball was hey, fun. It, it was fun. Now it is boring as shit. Nobody knows anybody. Nobody can pay attention to what is going on during the game because baseball sucks. And you all, not you, Smalls, but you all people who are governing the rules of baseball are the reason that it sucks. It is not exciting. This whole baseball is America's pastime thing is not true anymore. It's been football for like 50 years, okay? Football has been America's sport. It just is what it is. It is not baseball anymore. And you guys trying to hold on to a thread that are watching pitch counts and making sure that nobody even licks their goddamn fingers before they're throwing a ball. You all need outlawed. Forget outlawing HGH. You boring ass people who are ruining your own sport need outlawed. And you guys can can go do something else. Like Take it back to the days when it looked like backyard baseball out there. I want to see that. That's what makes it exciting. I want super sluggers. I want people out there trying to win games and run up the score because then it would be exciting. I'm so tired of, of watching these games and everybody comes at, at me for, you know, being a soccer guy or whatever. There are people actively moving at all times. Baseball is the only sport where you wear an actual belt. Gold. Think about that. Yeah. The only teams team sport yep. where you wear, where you wear a belt. In golf, I mean, you could do that in a full suit. What I'm saying is if this is supposed to be such an athletically difficult sport, now I get the hand-eye coordination. Extremely hard to hit a ball with a stick at 100 miles an hour. I'm not discrediting that. If you want to talk about that, like, Demetra Young and Big Poppy are super athletes, come on now. If you want me to respect the game, let them do what they do best and bomb the ball however necessary. Yeah, that- let, us, let us watch good baseball if that exists anymore. Hey, legalize pine tar too. I'm tired of that too. I want pine tar. <laughs> I want HGH. I want uh, now banging. Uh, well, it's not. I, I I hate the Astros more because I think it's funny than anything else. But like, it, you can't tell me that there weren't other teams 
pulling the same nonsense with them banging on the trash cans. Maybe it just was performed differently. But every major league team does that. You can't, like, and you can say it's cheating, all this other stuff. It, teams have cameras all over the stadium. It Let them use it. Like, it's gamesmanship, bro. Like, I want, give me steroids, yeah, give me is, pine tar. This is chess. This yeah. is strategy. G pal, yeah. uh, it, like do do something to to make it more entertaining, dude. I just it is, I I just I don't know, and, and it's sad because I grew up loving baseball, and now I hate it, and yeah, uh, and, and I think I grow more of a disdain because they do things like shutting Barry Bonds out of the Hall of Fame. What a crock of BS, man. Yeah, sorry, I know I swore a few times in my rant, and so I'm trying to cut back again, but man, I mean, just just the worst. So. Uh, regardless of all that, I wear my Barry Bond jersey with pride because dude, dude is, was always will be a dog and deserves to be in the hall of fame over any of those P words that are writers that determine whether or not he gets in there. So Barry Bonds, we love you, Barry. Um, Yeah. Yeah. Also dude. Well, so I also have a Bond jersey. Now it's not, it wasn't, I guess, definitely not authentic by any stretch. I got, I got it in an order with a few other guys. We got Chinese jerseys, as people do, right? Um, Gate skate. Yeah, yeah, you know it. Yeah, um, money. Yeah, money. It's good though. Yeah, exactly. But so the jersey I got, and I knew it, you know, when I ordered it, but I still liked it anyway. It was, it the Buccos wore it later in the '90s. It was pinstripe, still the same gray, still the same script just with the updated logo, but it's still a Bonds jersey. He never wore it um, because obviously he was gone by the time that they brought him in. But um, but the script, I'm so happy that they brought that back because the script, yes. it's just like the Pitt Panther script is clean. Flawless, man. It changes the entire dynamic of the uniform. Yeah, it, it really does. It, like, it, What other team has that? Like, That's a very unique – and you would think that this would be almost common, but like – what it's other not. team has that script? It's it's gorgeous. I'm so happy that you know the Buccos recently brought it, brought it back. Uh, only other point I'll add on to your baseball rant there, dude. The best player in your sport is Mike Trout, and you are not doing anything to try to prop that guy up or like make him entertaining or you know compelling whatsoever. He's he. Obviously, he's the greatest athlete in the MLB for sure. No. Absolutely, hundred percent. But no one talks about him because that, unfortunately, yeah. and I, lo- I still love baseball. Um, but unfortunately, that's kind of where the sport has gone. It's just it's diminished, and it's because of stuff like that, you know, where other sports yeah. are letting personalities fly, and that's kind of what the people want to see to an extent. I think there's obviously a line, but like people want to see that, whether you love that love the guys or what, you know, that and institute a salary cap. That yeah, that you gotta do that. I'm, I'm tired of seeing people run tables. I want to see everybody sweat a little bit, and I want to see teams that are never competitive get more competitive. You you gotta put a salary cap in there because the same six teams are gonna keep running the league uh, forever unless you install a salary cap. Do the right thing, you bunch of punks. Yeah. Also, hey, bring the DH over to the NL for God's sake. Yeah. What the hell? Like, come on. I want a DH. I don't want to see. I don't want to see freaking Jameson Tyone go out there and try to bunt <laughs> unsuccessfully. Like, yeah, just let the DH be universal. Let more big poppies flourish. Yeah. Um. All right. Let's go to my second pick. That was a, that was a good rant. I, that was that was a good pick overall, right? Uh, there. Hey. Thank you. Hey, but so is this coming in with the heater? No pun intended. Oh. Um, all right, so I'm going to go with the 2009 San Jose Sharks Danny Healy jersey. So, um, growing up, obviously growing up in Pittsburgh, Pens were my number one team. The Sharks were always my number two team, and I'll tell you why. I One of my elementary school teachers was a Sharks fan, and he was it was right as I was really starting to pay attention to hockey. It was right, as, right around the same time that the Pens and Crosby started to actually get good and legit so i started paying attention to hockey a little more and i got enthralled with the sharks man the entrance that the sharks have at in their igloo is electric 
coming out of that shark's mouth. Oh my god, it's awesome. Um, the jerseys themselves are sick. I'm a sucker for teal, period. And I think the combo between the uh, the gold that they picked and the teal, the gold is not like a yellow. You know, it's like a dark, almost like a Pittsburgh gold, but like maybe like a little darker, right? Um, working really well with the teal too. Plus. I firmly believe that this is one of the best logos in sports, period. This shark is mean as hell. That is a, that is a mean shark right there. It is a badass logo. I, I love the shark's logo. And then you get to the guy wearing it, Danny Heatley. Danny fucking all-star Heatley. I'm going to use my swear word there, too. Um, <laughs> this guy, at this point, he's a cult... He has like a cult following at this point, right? Back in the day, people didn't like him because at the time, he was about to get traded from the Senators to the Oilers after he requested to be traded, and he rejected the trade to the Oilers. And then later that year, he obviously got you know sent to the Sharks, and he ended up having a great season. Uh, I think his first game, he scored a hat trick. So like the guy, the guy was really, really good at hockey, um, and... This, so, I'll also tell you the story of how I got this jersey, right? I'll show it to the camera. There he is. The Heatmeister. You got the 15 up up on the uh, up on the shoulder here, which I think is different for hockey. That's not something that a lot of teams do, and I think it's different, but it also kind of works, right? But in general, this was just a, it's a great jersey, right? And again, the guy wearing it, at this point, he's like, it's a cult following with Danny Healy. The, the fucking all-star Danny Healy. Um, I found this jersey in a thrift store in State College. And again, I grew up as a Sharks fan. I found this in a thrift store. 100% legit, stitched. It was an authentic jersey. Found it for 16 bucks in my size. There's no way I could pass it up. And at the time, too, that was back in school when, like I mentioned before on the show, you go to parties in jerseys. That's just what people did. You go to day parties, day longs, whatever you want to call it. You go to parties in jerseys. And so I was already, re that really, that's when my obsession with jerseys really started. Like, I was kind of was fascinated by it or whatever. College was where I really got into it. And I saw this, and I absolutely could not pass it up because it, it's one of those rare things, and people ask me all the time, like, why do you have a Sharks jersey? And I get it. It's completely random. It, they are my yeah, second but if team. if they know hockey, all you got to do is turn it around and say, this is why. Point at Heatley's last name. Yeah, yeah, and I think I mentioned it on the show a few weeks back. Um, I was at the Bruins game, right? And the guys behind me, we were going up the escalator to our seats, and, uh, you know, I didn't want to wear my Pens jersey. Because, you know, the, burnt, the bees weren't playing. The Enemy fans. territory. Yeah. 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 Especially after last night's game. I don't know if you saw any of that. That was Brian Marchand's. A, I know, watched the whole thing. And, and yeah, Marchand needs publicly beaten. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, anyways, I, I go to the Bruins game up here. And uh, we're going up the escalator. And I got this jersey on. And the guys behind me, they're like, dude, that is sick. Heatmeister. He's got the heat meister. And like as a Jersey guy, as a threadhead, hashtag threadhead, that gave me that just gave me such a good feeling because I I take pride in it. You know, like I try to find unique stuff to wear and own. And like there's nothing Oh yeah, man. I mean that that's part that's our goal. Like, I mean, and not that it's always for a pat on the back, no, but like yeah. but like that that's what we're trying to incite, you know? Um, like, okay. I'm going to relate this to something. Do you remember last April? Okay. I was in Virginia and I was at a uh, brewery and I saw a guy with a Rocky yes. mountain vibes hat on and yes. I sent it to you. Yeah. I went up to him, told him about the vault. He looked up the episode and things like it's stuff like that. Like, Hey man, like that is cool. Like mm -hmm. I want you to know, like, I know what that is. I know what you're talking about mm -hmm. and I know how cool it is that you have it because it's rare. And it's, it's like a, intricate reference you know what i mean like and, and that's what is so cool about like that thread community is like everybody can appreciate an obscure uncommon sports item in like be a fangirl over it and i love that they're like we're able to do that those interactions are the type of things that like we live for 
Yeah. Yeah. And like, I, I think like I've mentioned before too, like, you know, back in school, even now it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Like if I see a sick Jersey that someone has, whether it's rare or like something that you don't see, or just like a good looking Jersey, um, I'll go up and pay a compliment. And like, I, that might just be a guy thing. And I, you know, it, you know, just guys being dudes, whatever. But, like, it's a real thing, you know? Like, guys bond over that for whatever reason. That's, like, a thing that guys it, bond over. It's one of our things. Ladies, let us have this. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Just let, let us have it. Let us have it. But uh, I, the only other thing I want to play. So, he, is, he now has a cult following because of the video that I'm about to play. So, if you know, you know. But, like, that, now this is not real. This is obviously dubbed over. But this this is the thing that just went viral oh shit really good signs of teams coming out of it do you see that in your team yeah you know i don't really fucking pay attention signs the only signs i pay attention are fucking dollar signs you know my fucking check and shit you know i'm a fucking all-star so whatever <laughs> favorite nickname fucking all-star <laughs> yeah our danny fucking healy <laughs> worst nickname on danny oh, fucking healy okay, okay, ben you can hear this right yeah, whatever fuck yes sir I'm a fucking all-star you shouldn't hit me like that i'm a fucking, I'm a fucking all-star you shouldn't hit me like that Dude, it, there's something about Danny Healy that is just so funny. Now, granted, I think he did, you know, unintentionally hit someone with his car, and we're not going to talk about that. Well, yeah, yeah we'll just we're not gonna we'll talk leave about that, that one. We'll leave that one parked for now, like he should have been. But hey, uh, Heat Daddy, he's the Heat Daddy though. That's what matters. Yeah, Dude. yeah, he's. He, he was a great hockey player to watch. I'll give you that. Yeah. Yeah. That much is for sure. All right. Ben, let's go to your last pick. I am I love this one. This is, out of all the jerseys I own, what I am now the most proud of. And it is simply because of the significance of it. Now, some of you who are basketball fans might, you know, be like, oh, well, it's just a Tyler Harrow jersey. No, 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 no. Last year, the Heat unveiled their trophy gold edition jerseys. Okay, this is to commemorate the championships that they have won. Anybody who knows, I am a Miami Heat fan. Okay, uh, that, that is my basketball team. Uh, I've been a fan of theirs. I took a break when LeBron went there because I thought it was a very terrible thing he did to the city of Cleveland. <laughs> but, uh, but my entire life, like I've been a Heat fan. The first team that I watched that I was enthralled with was the Heat with Dwayne Wade, Shaquille O'Neal, Jason Williams, Gary Payton was on that team. Like, And they won a championship in 06. And so at that point, I was 10. And I was like, oh, this is awesome. This is my team because Pittsburgh doesn't have a basketball team. But guess what Pittsburgh's colors are? Black and gold. So when they come out with a black and gold jersey, I'm thinking like, yeah, that's definitely up my alley. And it's my favorite team. Then I find out that they're only making a certain number of official jerseys. Now, they did make replicas and things like that. But this bad boy here is one of only 6,031 period. I don't uh, – there is a reason behind that specific number, but I don't remember why. You got to think there's like millions of people that are in the population of the city of Miami. Me in Podunk Town, Pennsylvania – has one of the only 6,031 jerseys that they sold from these. This wasn't 6,031 Tyler Hero jerseys. This wasn't 6,031 of a certain size of jersey. This was one of 6,031 period that they made ever, okay? And, and they are never going to do a, a reprint of these aside from the replicas that are the knockoffs. I stayed up until they did a midnight release, and I tried getting Jimmy Butler's uh, – jersey in the trophy gold because if anybody knows me well that is my favorite player so i tried getting his at midnight i had his trophy gold jersey in my cart i hit refresh because it froze it said sold out next one over was tyler harrow's i got it and got it so that i knew because there was a bunch of people doing the same thing as me most of them in miami waiting up until midnight to get one of these limited edition jerseys uh, and also, I like Tyler Harrow. I think he's he's been a baller. He's probably going to win six man of the year this year. He's doing excellent. The Heat, not going to brag about my team, but we are on top of the entire Eastern Conference right now. Uh, and it, this is just a pride pick for me because I genuinely like the way they look. has nothing to do with their colors at all. But I like that they're like bragging about trophies, even though they only have four. 
I, three? three? I think three. Yeah. Three? Yeah, because the two with LeBron and Wade and then the one with just Wade. So yeah. only three. It's not like they're the Celtics or the Lakers or somebody, but I love that they're just showing that off anyway. I think it's a cool idea. It was a great way to make revenue and make money, but the detail in the jersey with the black and gold and then even like the silver Nike swoosh, um, it is just remarkable. I do plan on uh, shadow boxing this because of how rare it is. Like I said, I mean, there are people – you figure how big the state of Florida is. And I'm one of only 6,000 people in the world who has one of these. So I'm very proud of it. Um, here is the front of the heat Jersey here. And you can kind of get some of that detail of, of uh, their sponsor and then the Nike swoosh. And then I still have the tags on it. Yep. Okay. Just to prove that this is legit authentic and I don't wear it because of how valuable it is. Um, I like that, uh, the metallic NBA logo, um, and then obviously just the detail and the stitching and everything. And then here to show you that I was not kidding. I have number 1914 of 6,031. Let me try and get that, uh, that patch up here. If you can see it. Yep. There you go. Okay. Can we see it there? Yep. This is NBA authentic. It is real. Um, and, and I remember, I mean, I was like a kid in a candy shop, man. It was one of the, like, I was giddy. I remember uh, I was laying next to my girlfriend. She was passed out. And as soon as I got it and it said, uh, order confirmed and they sent me the email, I was like, yeah! like in <laughs> laying in bed at midnight, it was on like a weekday too. So like I was staying up, didn't care if I was groggy for work. I swear to God, like I was walking in like, Hey, guess what I got? Guess what I just bought and all this stuff. It was uh, it was a pride moment for me as a threadhead, as a heat fan, as a fan of the black and gold color scheme. And just for the fact that it, that it's so rare, you know what I mean? That there, there will never be more made of these. And there are, I mean, probably millions of heat fans and millions of basketball fans that will never get their hands on these, but I have one. And yes, it is a little bit braggy, but it's probably the only one that I can say I know that not anybody could just go and buy right now. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Any of my other jerseys, you could look up and order. This one, you could not. And that's that's the one that I take the most pride in. So I had to throw it on the show. Yeah. And, uh, you know, every time me and Ben get a new jersey, we text each other, like, immediately. And I remember when you oh, texted me this. Like, teenage girls, bro. I mean, yeah. <laughs> it, it is. Like, yeah, I remember when you texted me. And, like, I mean, it's a feat to be able to, to, be able to snag one of 6,000. That's that's crazy. And also, Tyler Harrow, the song Tyler Harrow by Jack Harlow slaps. Hey, it's a banger. It slaps. Um, so, the Heat, I, in general, it take just take their uniforms in general. I'm a big fan of the Heat jerseys. They've put out a lot of, here's a pun here, put out a lot of heaters over the years. Uh, yeah, they have put out a few stinkers the last few. I'm not even going to lie. I love the Heat. Um, like their uh, alternates this year, not a fan of the Ransom Note looking ones. Yeah. Um, don't like that. And some of the cotton candy ones, it was dope when they had just the light blue solid and then the pink solid. But that like half thing that they did. I like the black did one. Did not really like that one. Oh, the, and the black one is easy. Yeah, the black one was yeah. the, I mean, that's the best one. And obviously the other two are good. I, I didn't love the. Yeah, like almost that Microsoft Paint look where it's like the transition. Yeah, the cotton the candy or whatever. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. It, but those were those were sick. I mean that that was an elite design period because like I mean that's about as Miami as you get. It literally called the Vice jerseys based on yeah. Miami Vice. So like like those were and they were so different too. Especially the black ones were cold. The black ones were oh, awesome, yeah. dude. Um, but like in general though, I, the, the heat logo, whether it's just the, the flame and basketball or the actual heat written out, it always looks good. I don't care what anyone says. It always looks it's good. simple, but it, it looks good, dude. Like I'm, I'm a huge fan of it. So, yeah. and you know, I mean, especially like when we're talking about sports or teams that like we weren't necessarily around all the time as a kid, like we fall in love with how they look and mm -hmm. You know, it's it's an aesthetic thing, and I think that was part of it when I was a kid. Is I liked the way they looked. I liked their uniforms. I liked their logo, and and I mean, and now I'm here. After I started watching them when I was eight, so 
what, 17 years later, mm-hmm. still, still watching the same team and, and, and loving them just the same. And, you know, I've loved them through the ups and downs and to be able to get one that was so rare and, and so me, you know what I mean? Like, I was like, Oh, like, as soon as I saw they, they posted on their Instagram, they were going to be releasing these. I was like, I have to have it. I will take out a loan if I need to, I have to get this Jersey. And, uh, and it is one of, and I'm not even a huge materialistic guy, you know, like, uh, there's not a lot of possessions I have that are like super valuable to me, but this is definitely on that list. Yeah. And yeah, like you said, I mean, the same thing with me and the sharks too. Like you grow, you, you aren't around the teams all the time, but one of the things that draws kids, you know, that don't know a ton about the team or the sport yet is the look, right? And mm-hmm. the same thing with the Sharks for me. Like, the Sharks just had that cool, different look that isn't common in hockey, period. And that's what yes. made me – one of the reasons that it made me fall in love with the Sharks. And, like, it, I remember when the Sharks, um, they – you know, it, for years they were just known as the team that got to the Western Conference Finals and didn't get to, to the the Cup Finals. And then yeah. the, one, the one the one year they did, they just had, it had to, be to be against the, the had, Pens. It had to be the Pens. I was, and not that I was torn. I like my allegiances are a hundred percent to the Pens, but I I was like, man, this sucks because like if it yeah, would have been because had it been any other team from the Eastern Conference, you would have rooted for the Sharks. Oh, absolutely, yeah. yeah. And like I was rooting for them the entire playoffs, right? Like I would, that was that was my team outside of the Pens. Yeah, like but, like hey, if it's not us, I hope it's you. Yeah, yeah. and I I still they're still trying to get their first one, and they're a little ways off now because I got they got rid of Pavel, uh, Pavelski. Obviously, Joe Thornton's you know I, I think he's up in Toronto still, but. I uh, know he's actually down in Florida right now, but um, it, you know he left the team. Uh, Brent Burns is still there, but they just don't have the fire. They lost the core that was so good for so long, and they just kept adding pieces for so long. And like I, I was so disappointed that like it just. And I granted it was one of the first of the it was the first of the back to back, and I will never complain about the Pens winning back to back, obviously. But I was like. If the Sharks just would have gone there any other year, I would have been ecstatic. But that's beside yeah. the point. That's bes- I forget how we even got here. But this this is fire just because of the story that goes along with it, and it's one of six thousand. That it's a collector's piece at this point. I don't know how often you're really gonna wear it, but like, no, that's what I mean, man. Like I'm definitely in a shadow box because it's so rare, and, and that's like one of those things. If I ever got because that's the thing is, even say he doesn't pan out. Mm-hmm. Right, the jersey itself is still valuable. There were Kelly Olynyk jerseys made of the trophy gold because he was on the team at the time. So some poor sap got stuck with one of the, those. At least I got like a quality player. And even if he doesn't pan out, the the sanctity of of how rare the jersey is is always going to remain. So I mean that that's something that I'm for sure going to frame. If anything, just as a Heat fan, to be able to say that I have one of a handful. Yeah. That's it's a that's a great pick. That's an, so, obviously an incredible pick. Um, all right, Smalls, round us out, baby. So I'm gonna go. Yes, 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 yes. We've definitely talked about this on the show before, but I'm gonna go with the '98 Vancouver Grizzlies jersey. So, like I said before, I'm a big sucker for teal, whether it's the Sharks, Coastal Carolina, or the Grizzlies. I don't know what it is about teal. I'm just drawn to it. I can't explain it. I don't even know if you would consider this teal. This might be more of an aqua. Whatever. Um, this is pure 90s NBA, and we've talked about that before, too, where it's a theme on this show, where it's like the cartoony logos, especially on the shorts. That is like one of the unique things about this uniform in general, not just the jersey. The logo on the shorts is so unique and almost in your face but not in a bad way maybe back in the day like we say a lot back in the day they might have been considered trash and understandable i get it but looking back on it now it's awesome so awesome to the point where northwestern i think back in 2018 actually had their senior day jerseys looking a lot like this they gave the seniors like full reins on designing their senior day jerseys they basically came out with this and just had the wildcat instead of the bear but there's something so cool whether you look at the 
Houston Oilers or the Montreal Expos or whatever team, the teams that are no longer around, the team, the franchises that no longer exist, the Hartford Whalers, honestly, that's another big one. Um, there's something about those logos and those jerseys that are so cool and it's so cool to have that whenever I saw this one in the store, I had to get it. Plus, Mike Bibby, national champion, uh, he was on the all-rookie team uh, his first year in the NBA. Kind of sucks uh, that Vancouver, it, it just couldn't, it, the team couldn't survive in Vancouver. Uh, there was a lockout, I think, and then they just weren't getting enough. There, there, there wasn't enough attendance at the games. I, I read somewhere, too, that the Canadian dollar was weak, which, you know, what a silly country Canada is. Uh, we've already talked about that uh, last season. but Overstated. Yeah, it sucks that Vancouver couldn't keep this franchise and they had to move it to Memphis. And they they changed the look, you know, when they went to Memphis too. And I, I wasn't I, – I'm still not the biggest fan of, like, the current Memphis Grizzlies look. But what I like is that they brought it back because John Morant is sporting these all the time. It's a it's a clean look. Yeah, their jersey. retros are tough, dude. Yeah. Their retros are dope. Um, and so you look at both the Grizzlies – uh, the Grizzlies logo, first of all, you have like the scratches from the claw. Uh, a little cartoony, but it works. I also, for whatever reason, and I don't, this definitely isn't common, but they paired the red and the teal really well together. I don't know what it is about it. Not a color combination you, you see a ton. Um, then you look at the trim on the neck and sleeve lines. It's just got that Pacific Northwest Sweet. vibe to it. I don't know. I don't know what tribes are up there. I don't know if it's Inuit or what a, what it is, but there's something about that pattern on the trim that is electric. There, it's just so it's so unique. And whenever I saw it in the store, I, I had to pick it up. So this is my Mike Bibby oh. Grizzlies jersey. Now, it, a little caveat here. This is not the original brand or anything. It's one of those Mitchell and Ness throwback jerseys. But I love that Mitchell and Ness, they, they, bring, they bring them back. Like, I have my Steve Nash Phoenix Suns one. That It's the same same type deal. That I am also very jealous of. It, it still um, hits. Dude, this is an incredible design, and it's timeless. Uh, I think you could have you could have brought that in earlier and bring it back today. Like we said, I mean, those retros that they bring back, they still keep like the new school font, but they bring back the original look of this Vancouver team here. Uh, and I think the, the most underrated part of the jersey and probably my favorite part uh, with, with the shorts too, around the waistband and, and around, you know, where you're the, the bottom of the shorts and the neck and the arms is the trim. I think that trim around there ties everything together. It looks awesome. And like you said, the red and the teal, realistically, if you know colors at all, should not play. But it does, and it plays hard. It is so dope. And this this color, whether it is a teal or an aqua or a mix of the two, um, is one of those where it doesn't make them look soft. Like it, It's still very bold, um, and it's just a clean look, dude. I'm, I've seen you wear this jersey. Mm -hmm. I'm a big fan of of what those jerseys have to offer. Uh, I wish Mike Bibby didn't turn into somebody that's not so great anymore. But yep. uh, as a basketball player, hey, just like we talked about Vic, you love the player, okay? Love the player, and he represent. He was the Grizzlies for a, mm -hmm. a decent amount of time. So uh, especially back when they were still in Vancouver, um, uh, just a a great jersey, and I think a perfect way to to close out the show because this to me even over the ones that i have like a, at least for for something that i'm going to wear probably my favorite that we've talked about on the show like if i was going to physically go out and sport a jersey and you're like hey wear one that you're going to enjoy wearing and that you think is just clean no matter what setting i put you in and it would probably be this one dude this is a dope jersey and i'm i'm so happy you threw this on i appreciate that i don't know if this beats your your tyler harrow one of 6,000. Uh, I'm not well, sure. Well, I, I mean, I think like, like that's probably the most rare, but I think that this is probably like the freshest Jersey that we had on the show. Like in terms of like just the way it looks like, I think it's probably the cleanest. Yeah. It, 
I will say this too. I'm a guy that, um, and I know exactly why you got, I mean, it's the same reason that I'm trying to get a, a Micah Parsons signed jersey. I'm not going to wear it. I don't care about wearing it. Um, yeah. Having said that, I would prefer, if I'm going to find a cool rare jersey, I would prefer to be able to wear it. And that's just, that's just me. Yeah. Um, and again, I'm not going to wear the Parsons one. You're probably not going to wear the Hera one. And that that's fine. Those are different. This one is one that I saw, and I was like, "I'm gonna, I'm gonna wear the." You got, you gotta wear that out. Yeah, yeah, you, you have to. I mean, it would be criminal for you to hide that thing. Yeah, and I remember the first time I, you saw me wearing this at Deeks Going Away show back in Pittsburgh. That was yep. the first time I wore it. That's the first time anyone really saw it. I think I really. I, I think I snapped you a picture of it. I was like, "Yeah, check this out." Oh like yeah, do, dude, but, what a debut. Yeah. I mean, that was – what a time. Yeah, dude. I just uh, – this, to me, the cleanest to, to physically wear out. Like, mm -hmm. this is this is dope because it plays wearing the jersey just by itself or or you even throw, like, a black hoodie underneath in the yeah. wintertime. I mean, this, this slaps anywhere you go at any setting at any time. This is one that, like, especially any hoop fan will respect seeing you wear this jersey. Mm hmm yeah, I will, I'm going to be – so, like I said, I'm going to be skiing this weekend. I might sport this on the slopes, too, over top of my jacket. So, hey, it wouldn't be a bad idea, pal. Yes, sir. Um, all right. So, let's take a look at just all of our picks real quick to close it out. Um, if I'm being honest, I my favorite jersey on the list, I think, is the Bonds one. If I'm being 100% yeah. honest, like, the Bonds one is – it's it, dude, that's like Pittsburgh history. That's like having a Yager, like the jersey that I had last week with, with the the Pittsburgh going, you know, diagonal. It's yeah. like the same type thing. If you're a Yinzer, you get it, and you kind of you're a little jealous of it, you know, because it's it's part of the fabric, bro. It's part of the fact, especially yeah. that was the last. I mean, you know, we had our run through, you know, for like three years with Kutch and all those guys here relatively recently. But really, that was like the heyday of Pirates baseball, and like oh that's what yeah, you and, and about. even and that's why I mean hell, I'm living proof. Like uh, you know, Barry Bonds had a had a not so great exit from Pittsburgh, but I'm still proud to say that he played here because he mm -hmm. was amazing. Mm -hmm. MVP. So and so you know, I think that uh, yeah, that one it, out of the ones that I own, that's probably my favorite to wear. Um, and maybe you and I are just we we've gotten too close with doing this that we just compliment each other too much. But mine is still probably Mike Bibby. But like we didn't have a uh, like a Homer one just for the sake of like oh well this is a jersey that I have and I'm just gonna throw it on the show because I have it. Like all of these are ones that I think sports fans can be like okay that's dope. Mm -hmm. So yeah. um, I, I think we did a good job. And like I said, I mean with you and me having as much as we have and we are always building our collection further and further, we're going to be able to do this again and probably a third time and so on and so forth. So yeah. uh, this is one I definitely look forward to revisiting, but Hey, to everybody watching, I hope that this was cool to kind of take a look inside of, you know, what we physically have and get a little sneak peek of what us threadheads are actually like when it comes to jerseys. So yeah, um, yeah dude, I thought this was a, a awesome, perfect episode to throw in. Yeah, and I, I don't know. We haven't really talked about it, and I'm just gonna do it on air now. Um, I don't know if we're gonna revisit this this season or not. Maybe we'll wait till next season. I don't know. We can kind of talk about that. But I think I it was I made some tough decisions because I had some I have some heaters in the closet right now. I and I, I, I'll wait. You know, maybe no. I'll just say it. I got uh I got a Pat Fryermuth black and like the color rush Steeler jersey. Ooh, that, yeah, I'm probably going to be getting a Friar Moose one as well. Yeah, so yeah. I I I mean, yeah, I'm probably going to have to. Yeah. Which pains me because he is a Penn State guy, but he is such a Steeler. Oh, he's like so he good. is like the he is the quintessential Pittsburgh Steeler, you yeah. know? Yeah. So I, hey, he comes to work and he works hard. He brings his lunch pail to work every day. Every Gritty. Day. Gritty. Um, has to be. All right, Ben. Cheers, brother. This has been a great episode. One of my favorites, I think, that we've 
done so far. Oh, hands down. One of the most fun, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think, uh, again, it, maybe we we're coming off as braggy. I don't really care. I think it's always good to kind of show off what you have. Um, and honestly, like... Well, We've been the Jersey guys for how long now? We got to we got to prove it. Yeah, and like you I've know? worn them on the show before, but I haven't really like talked about it. You know. Yeah, man. We we, we got to show that that we know what we're talking about because we invest in the game. Yeah. That, that's that's what we do. Yeah. Um yeah, and uh hey, if you guys have jerseys that you're kind of proud of, a hey, fan send submission. It. Yeah, send it. We want to see Great idea, it. small. Send them in to any thoughts from the bench page, whether that be through Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Send them in. We would love to uh, to talk about a few of them maybe next week and then post some of them um, on social. So please send those in. That would be incredible. Yeah. Um, ben, it's always a pleasure. This has been a good one. Uh, guys, this has been The Vault, the weekly show that takes a look back at some of the best and worst jerseys and sports we're threadheads man it's all that matters we're threadheads honestly i think that's a t-shirt idea i know d closed down the store and i i get it but i think we we should probably just make our own shirts yeah i mean and we've got like six different ideas at this point for merch so i mean we might as well just open up a vault vault yeah oh there it is all right hey guys go subscribe to the youtube page let us know what you like or don't like about the show. Leave us some comments. Send us your jerseys that you have in your closet. Uh, we'll be back next week. Hey, cheers, Benny. Cheers, brother.